Hey there, we are so thankful that you have made the choice to watch one of ACC's messages online. You know, as you are watching and diving into the truths that are being shared, we challenge you. You're sitting at your phone or your computer, hop on social media and be sure to use the hashtag you belong at ACC as God is teaching you different things during this message. But you know, we say you belong at ACC and we truly mean that, which means we would love to have you join us during one, our, one of our Sunday services at 8.30, 10 a.m. or 11.30 a.m. here at 710 Aqua Heart Road. So we would love to have you jump into this message and we're believing God is gonna do some awesome things in your life today. Happy Easter, Arundel Christian Church. So happy to see you all here to celebrate some of those stories we got to hear. Weren't those great? I just want you to know that's just a, a handful of stories that you can hear how God has been changing lives at Arundel Christian Church. You can go to our, our website, arundelcc.org slash stories, and our church has been sharing their stories, and you can check out other stories, maybe find stories that are like yours. But anyway, I want you to know real quick, we're really glad you're here. My name is Matt. I serve here at ACC as the lead pastor. And we're, we're ready to celebrate this morning a resurrected Christ. So I'm, I'm so thankful you're here, especially our guests. Uh, you are loved and you belong here at ACC. I got a question for you. As we kind of, uh, I, I want to discuss something with you this morning. And I want you to think through this thought. Uh, think back to when you were younger. Now, for some of you, you've got to think back a ways, all right? Some of us don't have to think back as far. Uh, I'm somewhere in the middle. Um, think back to when you were younger, and, and was there ever a spot in your, in your kind of childhood that you wished you could be someone different? You know what I'm talking about? Where there was someone in school that, that you, you noticed, and you're like, man, I wish I could have been them or there was someone that you just wish you could trade places, their life was just cooler than yours. For me, in fifth and sixth grade, I would have loved to have been this guy right here. <laughs> you guys know what I'm talking about, right? Zach Morris, Saved by the Bell. This is one cool cat. I mean, look, look at him. He's got a cell phone before anyone else did. He was like funny. He was popular in school. He could get away with anything. He had a girlfriend. These are all things, by the way, I didn't have. So I would have loved to have traded places with Zach Morris. It would have been great to have been someone different when I was in middle school. But what I want to ask you to do is fast forward that thought to right now in this moment. I want to ask you to, to seriously contemplate this thought for a second. Is there a, a, a time and when you wake up in the morning, when you got up this morning and you looked in the mirror, is there a part of you that wishes you could be someone different? Is there something about the person who's looking back at you and you're thinking, you know what, I don't really like who I have become. I don't like the kind of the jaded attitude. I don't like the anger. I don't like this addiction. I don't like what my bank account looks like. I don't like what my face looks like. I don't, whatever it is. Is there a point when you wake up in the mornings right now where you're thinking, man, I would love to just start over. I would love to be someone different. I would love to have all that baggage, all that lack of peace, all of that feeling of a lack of purpose, not knowing what my life is about. I'd love for all that to be gone and to kind of start fresh again. I want to ask you to take that thought and kind of put it in your back pocket because we're going to pull it out here again in a moment. But first we're going to change, uh, change lanes for a second. You know, another thing is we're going to be talking about the greatest story ever. One of the things I've learned about storytelling is some of the best stories are completely made up. Isn't that true? All right, listen, you know that if you've ever broken a bone before and you broke your bone because you tripped, when people asked you what happened, you probably made up something a whole lot cooler, right? Because I tripped isn't a cool story, right? The, one of the best examples of fake stories making the best stories 
is Mission Impossible. You know what I'm talking about. Somehow Tom Cruise, right, can have 100 people shooting at him at one time with automatic weapons, and somehow this cat some, you know, manages to get out of it without I- even a scrape. I- you know what I'm talking about? It, incredibly unreasonable odds, and yet somehow in Mission Impossible and other action movies, that, that they're always, the hero always seems to get through unscathed. And here's another thing I don't understand. This is, I've never understood this. When they don't get through unscathed, they end up with just a mere flesh wound, right? That they can continue to operate fully with, right? They can continue to run around and do stuff. No big deal. And I don't get this. They all seem to have a girlfriend who knows how to remove a bullet and stitch up a wound. You know what I'm talking about? Like, listen, I've had a few girlfriends in my life, and none of them have ever known how to do that. I've been married to my wife for 16 years, and Melissa, you still don't know how to remove bullets from my body and stitch them back up. I feel a little cheated. (laughs) But right, I mean, you you hear some of these stories, and they're completely like far-fetched, and yet they make really good stories. Because oftentimes those unreal, those kind of fiction stories make the best stories. But here's one of the coolest things about the greatest story ever lived is that the greatest story ever lived does not need any embellishment. We don't need to take anything that's fake and add it into the greatest story ever lived. And we're going to talk about that because the greatest story ever lived, there's no better time to tell that story than Easter Sunday. It's a story that already has action built into it. You don't need to add your own action into the greatest story. It already has a love interest built into it. It already has a drama and mystery. And some people would even go so far as to say that it has science fiction built into it. But I want you to know that science fiction, I think maybe what you're trying to say is that there's elements of the greatest story ever lived that seem supernatural. But I want you to understand that while many parts of the greatest story ever lived are supernatural. They're fully real. There's nothing fictional about the greatest story ever lived. And it's, a, it's just a powerful story. And what I want to do this morning is give you the Cliff's Notes version of the greatest story ever lived. So those of you who aren't quite sure what Easter is about, maybe you're not sure what, what we're celebrating today. Let me give you the, the, the Cliff's Notes version of the greatest story ever lived and catch us up to right now where we're at on, on Easter Sunday. So ultimately, the story is about a real God who created people uh, out of love to have a relationship with people. So God created people, and you know that love that's forced isn't really love at all. So God gave people a choice. God instilled, invented, and created in this creation a a, a choice that men and women had to choose to love God in return. So God created this choice. Men and women, you and I, we all chose to do things our own way instead of God's, and we created this barrier between us and God. But remember, the story started with a God who loves people and wants a relationship with people. So that God is still desperately and deeply in love with you. That God still loves me and my family. He loves you and everyone in this room right now. God loves you so much that he, he knew the only way to make things right was to send the only person who could make things right, Jesus, to, to be born as a baby on this earth. And we celebrate that on Christmas morning, right? So Jesus was born as a baby in that moment, 100% human and 100% God all at once. And that baby grew up and experienced many of the same things you and I experience. When Jesus would fall and scrape his knee, it would hurt. When he would, you know, he'd experience temptation and loss and a lot of the same things that you and I have in our stories, those things were part of Jesus' story. The one major difference, this is really important, is that Jesus' story, uh, Jesus never in the entire 33 years of his life ever stepped outside of God's best plan for his life. We, we call that, when you step outside of what God wants for your life and you do something different, we call that sin. And Jesus lived a sinless life, and you and I, we can't even go 20, you know, I can't even go 20 minutes sometimes, right, without thinking something or saying something or doing something I shouldn't. We are constantly broken. Jesus didn't do that. Jesus lived a perfect life. And, and then when Jesus started his ministry at the age of 30, he started teaching and, and healing people and performing miracles, and he started gathering a following, and people started following Jesus. And the religious leaders of the time hated the fact that Jesus 
His gathering was growing while their gathering and following was shrinking. So they started putting together a plan, and they ended up having Jesus falsely accused and, and sentenced to a death, the most excruciating, painful death you could ever imagine, being nailed to a cross until he suffocates to death. And Jesus was crucified. That's what we talk about on Good Friday. And then his body was taken off the cross and put into a tomb, a, roll, a stone rolled in front of the opening. And that kind of catches us up to where we want to be right now. I want you to know, listen to this, this is really important. If you've ever wondered what Easter is about, maybe you, are, you think, you know, Easter, I know what Easter is about. It's about Easter egg hunts and really scary looking bunnies in the mall and a fake grass that gets caught in my carpet and baskets and peeps and candy and all that. If that's kind of your understanding of what Easter is about, I want you to know that Easter is so much more than that. But the thing I really want to make sure you understand is Easter, the Easter story, is not about a dead Jesus. We're going to explore that in God's Word. You know, I talked us through, kind of gave us the Cliff's Notes version all the way up until the point where Jesus is now dead and in a tomb, but the Easter story is not about a dead Jesus. In fact, the Easter story is a story about new life. Again, I want you to understand this. The Easter story is not a story about death. It is a story about new life. Check this out. In Mark 16, verses 2 through 6, it says this. Very early on Sunday morning, just at sunrise, they went to the tomb. And on the way, they were asking each other, who will roll away the stone for us from the entrance to the tomb? But as they arrived, they look up and saw that the stone, which was very large, had already been rolled aside. When they entered into the tomb, they saw a young man clothed in white robe, in a white robe, sitting on the side. The women were shocked, but the angel said, Don't be alarmed, for you are looking for Jesus of Nazareth, who is crucified. He isn't here. Say this next line with me. I want you guys this next sentence. I want those of you who understand the importance of Easter, I want you to read it with all the joy and all the excitement that comes on Easter Sunday. You ready? Here we go. He is risen from the dead. That right there, that's what Easter is about. That's why we celebrate. That's why uh, we can find any goodness in what happened on Friday is because we know that Sunday's coming. And Sunday is here. We're now celebrating a risen Savior. You see, Easter is not a story about death. Easter, the greatest story ever lived, is a story about life. But here's a thing that we often miss in the Easter story. We know that the Easter story is a story about life, right? We know that it's, it's a story about Jesus being resurrected into kind of a new life. But I want you to understand that it's not just Jesus that we're talking about when we talk about new life. Let me show you. In Romans 6, 4, it says, Just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glorious power of the Father, now we, listen to this, the we is you and I, everyone in this room right now, just now, now that Jesus has been resurrected from the dead by the glorious power of God, now we, you and I in this room right now, may also live new lives. You see, the new life that is available isn't just a new life that Jesus experienced, not just the resurrection of Christ, but you and I, because of that resurrection, now can also for ourselves experience a brand new life. You see, the Easter story is not about death. It is about new life, not just for Jesus, but for you. In 2 Corinthians 5, Verse 17, it says this. This means that anyone who belongs to Christ. So who's this verse about? Anyone who belongs to Christ. Who's this verse about? Tell me. Anyone who belongs to Christ, right? Anyone who belongs to Christ has become a new person. The old life is gone. A new life has begun. So I want to I ask you now to take that question back out of your back pocket. We were asking at the very beginning of this uh, kind of uh, time together, 
Do you or have you ever wished you could be a different person? And do you experience that right now? Whoever you are right now, do you wish you could be a different person? Does your life lack the, the, the joy and the hope that can be found in Christ? Do you uh, hate who you've become? Are you an angry and jaded person with a terrible attitude? Do you wish you could be someone new and start a new life in Christ? The word of God right here says that this belongs to you, that you can have this new life, that the old life is gone and a new life has begun in Christ. So here's the two truths I see in this verse. Truth number one is that in Christ, listen to this, your old life is gone. I want to make sure you didn't miss this. In Christ, the old you, that maybe the person that you walked into this room as today Today, that person can be dead and gone. You can have a new life in Christ starting today because of what Jesus did, because he conquered death. You know, th this new life is a life of forgiveness. You might ask yourself, well, what sins is Jesus willing to forgive? All of them. Well, what if I, uh, man, you don't know who I am and kind of what the life, the life I've lived. Listen, all of them. This new life in Christ, all of who you were when you walked into this room today, it can be, can be gone. It can be buried with Christ. It can, be, it can be done. It's powerful. Maybe you feel covered in shame and guilt. Listen, your new life in Christ, all that can be gone. In fact, Jesus loves you so much, he's not even going to bring it back up again. I've had people that will come into my office and sit down and talk to me, maybe talk to me on the phone or shoot me an email, and we'll have conversations, and they'll kind of pour out some of the things that they've been struggling with. And they'll tell me, Matt, I wish I could be a different person. They'll tell me about an affair that they're in the middle of. They'll tell me about an addiction that they can't figure their way out of. They'll tell me about depression and how it's maybe led to self-harm or suicidal thoughts or attempts. They'll tell me about legal problems. They'll tell me that they've been sleeping around and that they feel worthless. And I tell them the really good news about what happened, that because Jesus conquered death, you too can have a brand new life in Christ. All of that doesn't have to be who you are anymore. All of that can be gone in the past, forgiven. See, here's a, a really powerful truth that we celebrate on Easter. Listen to this. Satan knows your name, but he calls you by your sin. He's going to pick on you and tell you over and over again. He's going to call you by your sin. Hey, sinner. Hey, thief. Hey, addict. Hey, whatever. He's going to call you by your sin, but listen to this. Jesus knows your sin, but he calls you by your name. And we were singing, we were singing this morning, our very first song we sang that, that Jesus calls your name and he's calling you out of the grave. He says, listen, I know your sin. I know all the things you've done, but I love you so much. I'm going to call your name and I want to call you out of death. I want to call you out of depression. I want to call you out of your sin. I want to call you into new life. You see, the truth that we're celebrating on Easter is not just a new life that Jesus experienced, but the new life that you too can experience in Christ. Now, I want to be real. There are consequences that come with bad decisions we've made in our lives. But in Christ, all of it can be forgiven. Here's another truth that we see in 2 Corinthians is that in Christ, a new life has begun. In Christ, not only is the, the old gone, but a new life is, can begin today for, for many of you in this room. You can decide today, I want to follow Jesus. I want to be in a relationship with Christ. I want my old me to be gone, but I want something new to start today. I want to be a new, changed person. We say all the time at ACC, listen, that God loves you just the way you are right now. Whether or not you love him in return, it doesn't matter. God loves you 100% just the way you are right now, but he loves you far too much to leave you that way. The same is true of me. God loves me the way I am right now, but he's hoping that I can be a better version of me tomorrow. He's hoping that I can be re re made new and, and restored and, and more like his son tomorrow. 
And the same is true for you. Not only can the old be gone, but a new life can begin in Christ for anyone who needs that today. In fact, I want you to know this, that Jesus doesn't just make us better. He makes us new. How cool is that? Jesus' plan for your life isn't just to come in here and kind of like tinker with your heart a little bit and to make you into a better version of yourself. Jesus says in his word that by, by giving your life to Christ, the old is gone and a brand new life begins. So as we ask that question this, this morning, would you and have you been feeling like you ought to be a different person, that, that there's something better, that there's a life of purpose and peace and joy that you're missing out on right now? I want to invite you to make a decision this morning to step into brand new life. To start today to say, I am going to be new and found in Christ today. Listen to this. When I first saw my wife in college, before we we knew each other, I, I knew about my wife, but I didn't know her, right? I knew about this girl named Melissa, but I didn't know Melissa. I had to go out of my way. I had to have just a little bit of faith that maybe there was a future for us. And I had to go and and start a relationship with her because I didn't want to just know about her. I wanted to know her. And for many of you in this room, you know about God. You might even go so far as to say, I believe in God, but you don't know him. And the Bible talks about a personal and real relationship that you can have if you step out and say, I want to start a relationship. Listen, when I first asked Melissa out, I had no idea that, that 19 years later, we would be married 16 years with three kids. I had no idea that was in the future for us. Just like right now, you might have no idea what's in the future if you were to give your life to Jesus today. But if you step out and say, Jesus, I, I know whatever I have been doing isn't working. I know I'm trying to find hope and joy and purpose in my life, but I can't. I'm going to start something new today. I'm going to start a relationship with you. I want to know you and not just know about you. I want to invite you to do that this morning. In fact, we're going to sing a song here to close this morning's service. And I want to invite you, if you're in this room and you know that you want to start a new life in Christ today, We're going to have some people from our prayer team and our staff up front, and you can come forward while we're singing this song and say, I want something new. And we'll help lead you into that new relationship with Jesus. We also are going to celebrate some baptisms while we sing this next song. And if you're in this room right now and you need to be baptized, you've yet to be obedient to baptism, there's a powerful symbolism. When you're buried under the water, it represents the old life being gone. And you are resurrected when you come back up out of the water into new life. And we can celebrate that with you today. If you are a follower of Christ, listen to this. If you're in this room right now and you are a follower of Christ and you have not been baptized, today's the day. We have shorts, shirts, flip-flops, towels. We have everything you need. All you need to do is come forward and say, I want to get baptized. We'll run you backstage, we'll get you changed, we'll come out, we'll baptize you today, right now. And if you need to make a decision to follow Jesus for the first time, I want to encourage you to come forward and and tell someone about that. We could even, listen, we could tell you and lead you into a, a profession of faith and also get you changed to get you baptized this morning. Here's the water, what's keeping you from getting baptized? Let's pray together. God, I'm praying right now, believing that in this room, there are many people who need to give their lives to you. God, I pray that as we celebrate a new life on Easter Sunday, God, we're not just celebrating the new life that you experienced as you were resurrected from the dead. God, we are also celebrating the fact that because you conquered death, we too can have and experience new life in you. For anyone in this room right now that doesn't know what that's like, that they've yet to step into that new relationship. I pray that you'd give them enough courage and boldness. Maybe encourage the person sitting next to them to elbow them in the side and say, this is you. Go forward and start a new life in Christ right now. That they would have the courage to do that. And for anyone who needs to get baptized this morning, I pray that you'd give them the courage to come forward and let's make that happen, God. We love you. We're celebrating the fact that you conquered death so we can too. We love you. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Church, let's come forward if you need to. 
Well, we are so thankful for the truth that was shared in this message today. Please know that we as a staff and as a church are praying that what you have learned today, the truths that God has put deep down into your heart, will manifest themselves and grow themselves into something amazing. And as always, you can experience that with other believers, other people who are walking this walk of faith at ACC on a Sunday morning at 8.30, 10 a.m. or 11.30 a.m. As a reminder, please remember, you belong at ACC.